Abdullah ta'ala wa barakatuh. Good day everyone. Um, so today we gonna give you some overview on Hashtag Solution software. Um, you're gonna see the what is actually Hashtag Solution software for. Just I will get you some ideas what it's all about. Right, so welcome to my lecture, my third lecture. Today is a introduction for HVAC solution software. It is used for hydronic air and steam system uh, to design all the components and to put everything in place. After you already calculated uh, the load, the building load. And this program uh, you can actually use for seasonal temperature. You can set the seasonal temperature maximum and it allows users to design a specific hydronic air and steam systems. Uh, we can drag and drop and connect objects for the design according to the specification or calculated load beforehand and um, all the components can communicate to each other um, and some requires uh, input from users right so who should use this program um, this is actually for uh, consultant or uh, for HVAC system design designer. Um, but beforehand, a firm and understanding of mechanical systems is needed for full application. It is specifically used for HVAC field and should be used under supervision of experienced individuals. Right, so I, I'm not one who promote this um, software, but this is the software, the design uh, HVAC system software that will be used in our class. So the purpose of this program is to design and size HVAC equipment uh, based on um, seasonal heating and cooling temperature extremes. And from there, you can get graphical depictions of HVAC equipments. And you can see all the connections. You can also um, assess the properties of each component by double left clicking the component. The final output of this program is a schematic and equipment schedules for use in contract documents. You can use for proposals, for communicating your design, and other more. Basically, this software uh, can be used to insert components. You can freely arrange and connect all the components. You edit, you can, you could edit uh, the components parameters to meet your specifications mm, and yeah you can actually select all the equipments this software um, is best to build schematics of air handler unit you can also um, generate airflow schematic or draw yourself the airflow schematic and also a hydronic schematic. We're going to look at it uh, in more details in the software later on. Okay, so basically you can build a handless airflow, hydronic system and steam system in this software. And these systems can communicate with each other. What does that mean? It means that 
the end result of each components uh, is linked to other components so that it can be sized properly and you can export information in form of shadows and schematics. Right, so the first step to build or to, be, to begin a project, you can build an air handler or air handlers. Which one do you need? Um, and the calculated load can also be imported uh, in this software, but I'll show you uh, in later lectures. But for today, we're just going to look at roughly what this software can do. Okay, first step is build the air handler. Then um, this is so that you can uh, you can put all the schematic component uh, the comp you can generate the schematic of components together for scheduling and cabinet sizing for uh, purposes AHU cabinet sizing and then um, after that you can insert all the components into the air handlers. Okay, first insert the air handler cabinet then set components into the air handler cabinet basically a hand air and air handler needs a supply fan heating coil or cooling coil right so you can actually duplicate the components automatically where it's applicable and or you can set aside first the duplicate components for later use in your airflow schematics or hydronic schematics and the air handler cabinet will be sized only if an uh, air handler schematic is built so this is basically the air handler unit this, uh, the grey one is the air handler cabinet this is a relief fan this is filter ERV8 then this one is a supply fan, heating coil and cooling coil. This is a basic components in an air handler. So what is airflow schematic? First you have to build air handler um, and automatically air flow schematic may be built. Components in addition to those automatically inserted will be required to complete an airflow schematic. Okay, um, what is airflow schematic? I'm gonna show you. It looks like this. So after the components are all inserted, it can be connected to each other. So this double line shows it is um, connected. It will be shown in blue color and red color normally. Right, we already we have seen um, air handler unit, airflow schematic. Now we come to hydronic schematic. What is hydronic schematic? And normally. Um, hydronic components con consist of palms, boilers, chillers, etc. And a simple heating schematic will be include a heating coil, a boiler and a palm. And a simple cooling schematic will include a cooling coil, an air cool chiller and a palm. And it may be desirable to separate a hydronic schematic into heating and cooling schematics. You do not want you would wanna would not want to mix it. After hydronic components have been inserted, it can be organized and connected. Okay, please uh, arrange your components accordingly so that the the connection won't be that messy. You have to really connect it out to in or in 
to out. How? We're going to show you in a short time. All right. Um, and this hydronic schematic can be dependent on an airflow or air handler schematic. As you change data in the schematics, the hydronic schematic will be automatically updated so you don't have to open one by one. It can communicate from one schematic to another. Right, this is basically um, the red one is the heating uh, hydronic schematic and the blue one is the hydronic cooling schematic. This is just an example. Right for heating schematic, we have heating coil and of course the, the load, uh, the terminal unit and here we have boiler. The green one is an expansion tank. The S stands for air separator, P for pump. And for cooling schematic, we have cooling coil, um, air separator, expansion tank, pump, uh, and of course the load, the ICL, the um, cooling load, and also a chiller. And from this schematic, you can actually automatically see what is the load of the, uh, sorry, for cooling coil, what is the load for, for the space and also for the chiller in BTU per hour or tons of refrigeration. You can also see um, the gallon per minute of water for the whole chiller. Right, so how to connect components? Just insert the components, arrange on the workspace and just connect them. Um, and the connection points are usually found at the left and right of the components and represented by a black arrow. Arrow pointing into the component represents input to the component and arrows pointing out of the component represents output of the components. And please click the jack connection arrow icon on the main toolbar to enter the connection mode. Connection are made by right clicking on the connection arrows. And when a connection is first started, the component connection arrow will turn green. You're going to see more clearly after this in an example. Okay, this one, um, asymmetric components will connect with a double line denoting a duct. And hydronic components will connect with a single line denoting a pipe. This one is a single line and this is hydronic schematic. So this single line represents the piping. And the air schematic components, airflow components, is connected with double line. Here. Yeah double line. This is an airflow schematic. Right? Connected components communicate relevant information back and forth. That's why it is automatically calculated. Everything, once you updated the data or the input, then um, the relevant information will be um, send automatically to another component and the calculation will be automatically updated. Right, so note that a dash or dark um, indicates a bad or incomplete connection. If the color of the piping is black, then maybe you have a wrong connection. 
Once a circuit is complete and a load value available components annotation will show calculated data and lines will be displayed in color. If the system circuit is incomplete, it, uh, the annotation will be displayed as undefined and connection lines will remain black. Then something is wrong. You have to recheck your connection. What about data input? This is basically the, uh, the features for chiller. You can double click on the components on the chiller, then this um, tab will pop out. The default data at each component, um, if it's in white color, then it may be edited to suit your job specifications. But somehow with the gray one, um, normally it is auto automatically calculated from previous components or other input parameters. But data in gray fields, um, if there's checkbox, and if you can click on the checkbox, that means you still can edit it by checking the box first but it is to be changed um, cautiously you really have to know what you are doing and whether your input are correct or not normally uh, data in gray fields is calculated or fetched from other components and therefore cannot be edited Okay, there's nothing to write here. Load programs interface. Um, the primary purpose, in a nutshell, we can say that uh, the primary purpose of this HVAC solution program is to determine equipment size and provide equipment schedules. This is accomplished by system designs via simple schematics. And for the loads, as for the loads, you can calculate it first by using certain softwares such as Elite Software, CHVAC. And the calculated load can be imported into the HVAC solution software. Okay, from the load software, you can alter the altitude. Uh, outside air conditions, space air temperature, space cooling supply air conditions, space airflow, number of people, space sensible heating loss, etc. etc. Okay, other information can be transferred. Uh, from the load software. I'm talking about load software right now. So other information may be transferred such as space dimension, static pressure values, etc. Um, and once the above information is calculated by load software, it should be input into this program and system should model in this program as closely as possible to the way they are modeled in the load software to ensure to ensure the similar results but it is to be bear in mind that the results may never be exactly the same due to the round off issues slight formula differences and differing modeling options if the results of this program differ significantly from the load results please check your inputs in both programs and correct where possible it may occur that your results is different, for example, in heating load totals. This program offers a pickup load option, which may not be in the some loads, other uh, load programs. <laughs>